Hi, welcome to the LQB show. We'll all know together in this podcast by asking Mr. Murli Reddy, who has done Vipassana a few times already, and he is going to do the Vipassana again pretty soon. And he can give us the whole picture of Vipassana. So today, let's learn what is Vipassana and what can we achieve through Vipassana or how can we be better through Vipassana and how can Vipassana help us be better. So let's get into the podcast. Please do subscribe. Do not forget to subscribe. Send it to all your friends. Share it, comment, subscribe. Thank you. Hi, Murli Dargaru. Welcome to the LK Show. Hi, 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 hi. So, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Patisha. And uh, it is absolutely brilliant to uh, join this morning with you. Yeah. So, Murli Dargaru, um, I know you've been doing Vipassana uh, from so many years of your life. Can you please tell us about yourself before we get into Vipassana? Uh, my name is Murli Dargaru. And uh, actually, I live in Bangalore here. Mm-hmm. Um, near the chasar layout area and uh, i'm a chartered accountant and also an mba in finance and uh, marketing wow uh, yeah though uh, though i'm a chartered accountant i, I never practiced um, uh, ca okay so after getting graduated up become a professional certification i joined the uh, mnc uh, a global company called caterpillar in osur man native town because that's the same year the caterpillar came into india mm mm-hmm. So for me also, they were also looking for any talent. I was barely 23 years. So for me, I mean, job came to my home and then my elders were saying, take up the job. So once yeah. you took the job, about a year, um, then, you know, you know I, that continued. Yeah. And fortunately for me, working with Caterpillar worked very well. And because for the next 27 years, I worked with the same one company. Right. I always had a dream to retire at the age of 40. So okay. this is very unusual for uh, my generation. Could you do that? W- were you able to do it? I, I I failed to retire at the age of 40. Okay. But I did retire at the age of 49. So nine okay. years later I did. So for the past seven years, I'm actually leading a retired life. Wow. So when I say retired life means I'm not uh, showing up anywhere for the paycheck. Okay. So I don't need a paycheck month after month. Mm-hmm. So... One of the my both my chartered accountancy uh, education and also my MBA in finance and also working in Caterpillar with various roles and responsibilities. I also gained a lot of insights into how the companies work, what mm-hmm. is the performance and things like that. So very mm-hmm. early, very very first thing, even before I started my first uh, paycheck, I started investing. Okay. So small amounts, very little, tiny tiny amounts. We should we should do one more podcast on investing then. Yeah, yeah, I think that is another lovely subject. I, yeah, I we should do that. We should yeah, do that. Because, yeah, yes, yes. So very early on, I started at the age of 23. Okay. Invest the money. So mm-hmm. I made lots and lots of mistakes. Mm. But what actually happens is that, you know, the successes never teach you anything. Yeah. The failures is the best teacher. Yes. The successes only actually push your ego up. Uh, because successes can be also be a left factor. If you are very disciplined and if you are very contented, then you really start enjoying the fruits of success. Yes. Okay. If you are not contented and uh, if you are... Uh, yeah. That, that uh, applies to life as well. That yeah, applies to in every... You need to be contented. So yes. basically, anyway, so I made a lot of investments. I made lots of other stuff. Then I seriously took... At the age of 39, I realized, uh, hey, next year I'm supposed to retire. Then I started assembling it and there was no way. <laughs> then for 39 to 49, the next 10 years, I worked a lot more vigorously on investments. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it was a very, very hard decision because I was getting a very high, uh, I was in a very high level of yes. the corporate ladder yes. and also getting a very fat check, very yes. fat check with a lot of purposes. Yes. yes. And still two young children at home and, you know, it was a very, very difficult decision. Yeah. Um, but two years after the decision, actually, I felt very, very, you know, did I really take a right decision? Did I really take it? Uh, and I, I, you know, I was just always contemplating. Mm-hmm. After two years, I realized it's the best decision I ever made. Sir, what is Vipassana? Tell me what is Vipassana? Oh, Vipassana, the word Vipassana is a Pali word. 
Mm-hmm. The Pali is a, a contemporary to Sanskrit language, or maybe mm-hmm. earlier to Sanskrit. I'm, I really have no idea about it. Mm-hmm. But it's a spoken language those days. Okay. It's not a, people who were pundits or something they would use Sanskrit, but Pali right. is a spoken common oh, language. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so it's a Pali language. It's very close to any of the Sanskrit or Indian languages. Uh, mm-hmm. It is a, it's a combination of two words: V, V I, V. Mm-hmm. Pasana. We mm-hmm. means um, minutely, okay. deeply, investigating, analysis. Uh, that is we. Pasana means observing, looking into it. Mm-hmm. Okay, just observing as it is. Okay, so pasana is the observation. We is minutely, as deeply as you can. Okay. So you look as deeply as you can. Yeah. Then you see the truth. So that is vipassana. So vipassana is a scientific process of deeply observing, or okay. deeply analyzing, or deeply investigating. Okay. That's the that's the word of vipassana means actually. Okay. So it is not, it's nothing to do with spirituality. It's nothing <laughs> with all those things, yeah. Yeah. So where is it originated from, sir? Like um, initially, where is it originated from? It happens in everyone's life. Um, mm. what actually happens is that basically uh, when you are young and uh, you are not for the, for the first 14 15 years of your age you are going to school and you are a lot more dependent on the your parents and your mm-hmm. elders what they are guiding through so the basically by the age of 21 by the age of 14 15 when you get to attend standard now you know you need to clear attend standard mm-hmm. then immediately what you need to do the next is a science stream or a commerce stream or, or yeah. a general general studies kind of stuff so i actually took a commerce stream because i knew i, I was not fitting into the science mm-hmm. so kind of stuff so then you do the cup then you know what to do next then you get into the kind of stuff then you really suddenly by the time from the age of 17 to 25 uh, you know that's the time you do a lot of experimentations on yourself you become a little bit of a rebellion it's mm-hmm. everybody is like that yeah. so yeah. when i was rebellion to my my own age I, I'm see. I saw my. So basically, they try to disagree with a lot of things. Yes. They started yes. becoming, which is actually a good thing. No, yeah, it, it it helps you in the process. Yeah, yeah, it helps in the process. So they become the more and more independent, mm-hmm. and uh, they try to do that, and then suddenly hits do. Hey, what should I do for my life? How how I'm going to support myself? So that's a simple questions come. Then you become a graduation. Then you take a, the first job or a practice mm-hmm. or whatever that shows. In my case, a, a job was an answer. Mm-hmm. For some people, in business. A lot of my classmates are yeah. really well than equal, than or even better than me. Yeah, and they didn't even complete graduation, or they barely completed graduation, but they have yeah. actually done extremely well in business. By the age of twenty-seven, twenty-eight, you know, you start dreaming about the most beautiful woman on earth coming part of your <laughs> life, and you know, you have some your own imaginations, your own expectations, yeah. <laughs> which are not going to get fulfilled anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so same maybe for the uh, for women also yeah i think yeah, it's pretty much the same yep <laughs> you know, they also think about the the best uh, uh, man on earth the prince the, the prince coming him. on the horse <laughs> take her along <laughs> so yeah so she wants to chat and he wants to watch cricket and then the first <laughs> argument starts like yes <laughs> yeah so, so, then there are onwards the incompatibility a lot of stuff might happen but anyway we all live yeah. through we all go through that and then yes it's a question of we have our own space at the end of the day each one of us on this earth is for our own self yes oh my god and that's so true that's the most truth but nobody speaks about it that is the truth that's the truth that's yeah. what i'm going to say with all that then we create all this clam of arch we put a lot of yeah. masks yeah and this i'm a chartered accountant and mba what so what Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean I'm so, an engineer. So do you think when you when you said vipassana you're saying that deeply you have to keep observing yourself um does that make a person better see I also believe where you said that that is the truth of self the you yourself is the only truth that exists right and I also believe that um we should not be complaining about that person's behavior this person's behavior or this is how it is you need to deeply look into yourself and you be the better whatever you want to be and i don't think then like any kind of complication you can face it what do you think about it yeah uh, you said um, something very interesting but uh, i just break this into two parts mm-hmm. what you said 
Mm-hmm. So smart. Uh, this is somewhere I read very recently, maybe a couple mm-hmm. of months ago or something. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed this quote. Mm-hmm. A comparison is mm-hmm. the thief of all joy. Thief of all joy. Yes. Oh, so different. that means when you compare yourself with others or anything, mm. that means you are actually letting go of your joy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. similarly, now the second part comes. Then, if you don't compare yourself, what is that? You should don't. You start looking within yourself. Yes. So you start looking deeply, mm-hmm. Vipassana, deeply looking, observing yourself. You're observing. your own emotions you are you are observing your own thoughts you are you are observing your own speech you are observing your own actions in many different 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 angles okay but that actually is the second step in vipassana but they start teaching you how to observe your own life first in the beginning okay and um, you know, the first uh, thing they teach in vipassana is to observe your own breath breath yes. as it is as the breath comes in as the breath goes because we are all living right now as you and i are talking we are breathing mm-hmm. we uh, we may be aware we may not be aware of it but uh, if we don't we stop breathing we don't we stop uh, yep. existing yep so let, let's so, like uh, take it in steps sir let's say when you are observing your own breathing when you are taking it in and taking it um, i mean breathing it out what happens then sir tell me that explain that moment what happens when you start observing that your your own breath because it's very difficult to observe yes because the moment you close your eyes and you know uh-huh. Like this, and then you start absorbing your breath at the entrance of your nostrils, and in a trillionth of a second, in a millionth of a second, or hundredth of a second, your mind is suddenly is in Sydney or in Paris. Yes, you are not with your breath. <laughs> yes. Okay, or with something. Yeah. So that means basically your mind travels either to the past, mm-hmm. or it travels the is to the future. The present is the breath. Yes. so it's very difficult to do that but eventually you will start observing you'll start putting your efforts and start mm-hmm. observing observing the breath if you really continuously even we observe for 5 minutes mhm 5 minutes that's too much actually 5 minutes is like too much literally absolutely too much yeah that takes yeah. years of practice yes okay so today i can't observe for 5 minutes do i have <laughs> i get it yeah 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 <laughs> so probably for about the 30 min 30 seconds or a minute yep. or minute yep. and a half you can definitely yes. you can yes. observe the breath So mm-hmm. when you start observing, that means what actually happens now you are deeply observing your breath. Mm-hmm. So that's the first step. So mm-hmm. you start learning how to observe yourself deeply by observing your breath. Then, yeah. So the the breath is a starting point. Then you start observing deeply into it. Okay, so, which makes sense. Breath is you basically. If you're breathing, you're alive. Breath is, breath alive. is the, the fundamental of existence. I mean, okay, you're existing basically because uh, you're breathing. Yeah, we are breathing. Otherwise, we are not existing. So yeah. That's where you okay. Start. So that's a, so it's a in a ten day vipassana course. It's a must. Okay. Okay. Anybody who wants to learn about vipassana has to devote ten days of full time. Why ten so, days, sir? Why ten days? Ten days is the minimum amount of time, basically, mm-hmm. because uh, you need to really uncondition yourself. Okay. And um, of coming, you have so many daily habits. We mm-hmm. we are not even aware of so many things. So this there's mm-hmm. a the first three days of that three mm-hmm. three and a half days we start observing our breath. We train ourselves even mm-hmm. like about close to ten hours a day. Okay. Uh, so in 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 somewhere about roughly about thirty to thirty five hours we'll be training ourselves in the first three and a half days to mm-hmm. observe our breath. And then at that point of time. then the mind uh, the physical activity all those things completely calms down because you are doing the retreat in a complete silence you so mean, first i mean like um, let's say for let's take it uh, slowly so first 3 days for 10 hours a day you sit somewhere and you observe your breath not sit somewhere there is actually something called a meditation okay. hall okay so in, in a group of roughly about depending upon the facility of the center some facility uh-huh. center, Basically, people some seventy, some eighty, some hundred, some even two hundred. So, depending upon the facility of that, in a common meditation hall, under the guidance of an assistant teacher and under the guidance of the teacher instructions, you start observing. So, there's somebody guides you to how to observe the breath for ten hours continuously, sir. No, 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 no. It's impossible. So, yeah, yeah, you, you do it for about forty minutes. Uh-huh. First, it starts with actually fifteen minutes. The first okay. night. 
Then mm-hmm. it's gradually they take it up to 30 minutes, 40 minutes, then about 50 to 55 minutes. That's all the maximum. Okay. Then every hour you take about five to ten minutes of break, then you come back and do that. Then there is an hour of lunch. Then there's right. an hour of afternoon time, like that. So yeah. it just starts in the morning. The first it starts around 4 30 in the morning and it concludes at 9 30 in the night. Okay, got it. Uh, so you have a breakfast time, you have a lunch time, then you have an evening tea time, and then there is some kind of a walking show, I'd say, basically in that four mm-hmm. thirty to nine thirty in the night, which is basically mm-hmm. uh, and whatever the number of hours. So, so you do about ten hours. Ten hours is given, but uh, generally uh, people push to do all the ten hours. But effectively, somebody may do it for eight nine hours, sit together and things like that. They may take a lot of. So you are there. As we discussed, so, sir, just now uh, we just spoke out how hard it is to observe your breath for hardly for five minutes, right? So how how can we sit? continuously for one hour by observing our breath how can i mean like see it is like um going and practicing is, is basically what you do is that basically you do there are 26 alphabets in english okay mm-hmm. so <laughs> but you go for a year or two to learn <laughs> Got it. then it's not warning you so it's like that so it's okay and of course you're trying you're trying every time you try but let's say if i'm sitting for one hour from now um i started observing for after one minute my mind started wandered you know to go to paris or whatever and then bring it back but you sit there one hour trying to bring observe your breath is that what we're doing absolutely that's what so hundreds of times for example in that one hour uh, let's say for example um, your mind has gone about, let's say, every 30 seconds. That means mm-hmm. basically for 120 times, it's gone, it's wandered away. Mm-hmm. So then slowly you start observing. The next hour when you start sitting, it's not 120, it becomes 100. Oh, got so it. Understood, sir. Then the next hour you slowly comes to, it's not 100, it becomes 70. Like mm-hmm. it's slowly. So kind of stuff. So it keeps on wandering. That, you know, basically, but we pass on it, they clearly teach you. This is an mm-hmm. uh, incoming breath, outgoing breath you're observing. Mm-hmm. But there's nothing to feel shame about it. Okay. There's nothing to feel regret about it. Okay. Yeah, yes, my mind wandered away. You accept yeah, it yeah. as a reality. Yeah. So it is the whole journey is accepting the reality as it is. Okay. Not what you would like it to be. Yeah. So people, a lot of people have mis- misconceptions about Vipassana and meditation. So particularly meditation, which I am aware of, I'm really not aware of Vipassana. That is the reason I'm doing the podcast today, as I discussed with you earlier too, is that in meditation, people think that you become yogi once you sit down. You don't. You keep wondering, a movie comes in front of you, you see a whole movie, you try to bring your mind back and it's a practice. So thank you for saying that. Vipassana is also a practice. It's not a one-day thing or a one-minute thing. No, 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 no. It is a lifetime practice. It's yeah. absolutely life. It's a, it's a lifestyle, actually. Okay. So, so for so first three in, days, we understood that it's breathing, concentrating on breathing. So what happens no, next? Then, then the fourth day, then the, then the fourth day, in the afternoon or something, they teach you something called Vipassana. That means how to observe mm-hmm. the interaction with your mind and the physical body. See, the mind is there in every cell of our body. Mm-hmm. It's not the brain. The brain yes. and the brain are two different things. Yes. The brain is actually a physical organ. Yes. So the mind is there in every cell of our body. Mm-hmm. So this mind and the physical body is in a constant interaction. Okay. So then now you start uh, start observing because now the concentrated, the mind is calmed down. So you are completely aware of your body. You are completely aware of your mind. You start observing what is how this interaction is taking place? Can you give me an example, sir? Very good example I can give you. For example, mm-hmm. okay, that's the that's where the this breath becomes a bridge between the mind and the body. Mm-hmm. Okay, let us say for example, you can observe your own self. You become angry. Okay, you can immediately put an attention and look at your your breath. Your breath becomes harder. Mm-hmm. Your breath is not normal. It loses yes. its balance. Yes. So that's what is the thought about. So that's an example you can. So that means when you are when we are angry, our breath is not normal. So it becomes mm-hmm. harder, and then we become kind of stuck. Yeah. So when we are very extremely happy, the our breath is completely relaxed. Yes. So when we are uh, you know passionate or, or anything yeah. else, so the, our breath patterns keeps on changing. So, because of these changes, now something actually happens at the physical level. Because actually, yes. there is a sensation on the body. Yes. 
there are sensations throughout our body all the time so then you start observing those sensations and every sensation has got yeah. only one characteristic mm-hmm. the characteristic of impermanence mhm so that sense it arises it gets it's it gets intensified and it subsides and it passes away same thing with your anger it, it arises it gets highly intensified then it subsides it passes away okay. so the way for you to come out of it to know the reality intellectually you know that your anger doesn't stay for 24 hours of course <laughs> but experientially you also you see that you are observing your sensation on the body which is the manifestation mm. so what is manifesting is impermanent okay so then you start oh looking at oh I'm, my anger is impermanent my greed is impermanent my jealousy is impermanent my lust is impermanent my anxiety is impermanent my insecurity is impermanent okay okay yeah my doubt is impermanent when yeah. i saw that when we start looking at all these things so that is basically the reality the reality is that every single thing animate or inanimate in the entire universe is nothing but impermanence yes that's the first start so you start looking at so then slowly you start seeing that, oh if there is an impermanence what is impermanence is the cause of suffering okay because mm-hmm. we start attached to that impermanence then oh yeah if something is impermanent why should i pay attention to it and why should i get attached <laughs> to it you know slowly that thing starts uh, moving into that direction it doesn't happen in one uh, I, i understand over a period of 10 days absolutely every single person goes through some level of transformation every single person okay every single person who completes the course successfully and sincerely mm mm-hmm. okay and dedicated he will definitely will see a, a completely a new phenomena of life a okay. my mind and my body my mind is actually the one which is actually dictating my life it's manomaya okay now so where you said happens. mind and physical body connections so yes. when- so the yeah. what manifests from the mind is basically the, at a vocal level it's the speech mm-hmm. or at a physical level so you do something with your hands or with your eyes or with something else so this is a physical either or speech mm-hmm. okay okay so you suddenly you see somebody like your sister or your mother okay the mind says hey is your mother okay so suddenly the naturally the reaction that you know you start greeting you start smiling you seem happy yeah okay suddenly um, you see a person uh, whom you had an argument Uh, in this in the class or in, in the office the mm-hmm. moment you see that person suddenly the mind says here is the person with whom i had an argument so you become tense okay you become a little bit discomfortable mm-hmm. inconvenient whatever that mm-hmm. so it's basically see this is the this is the reaction of the body the moment you become tense kind of stuff you are no longer smiling when that person yeah. with whom you had an argument comes the smile doesn't come then probably you realize and then you know you may do an artificial smiling or something. that may happen may not happen or you may just walk away or you may suddenly looking at through the window and you know avoid that person all those things can happen see mm-hmm. those are all physical actions mm-hmm. okay okay so so this is this is what it is so either uh, the mind and the and the uh, and the matter which is basically the body is basically the constant attractions and the next six six and half days is start observing that basically because the bridge is between the sensation that the sensations that actually happen on our body mm-hmm. and we see this characteristic of every sensation the characteristic of every sensation is the impermanence okay so the first reality or the major reality of vipassana is to see things as they are oh. so when you said see things as they are when you know that everything is imperm impermanent or impermanence so what is permanent then impermanence is the permanent <laughs> everything is maya then <laughs> yeah i mean yeah the, what is permanent is the impermanence you know okay so that's, okay. that's, that's, that's permanent that's okay permanent. so while doing vipassana sir why are you asked or why are we asked to not talk at all what is the resemblance of not talking to do with um, observing practical simple practical reasons i just mm-hmm. we said we talked about you know comparison 
Yes. Okay. So then you start comparing what you did. No, it's unnecessarily chatting. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's, a, it's a distraction. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then, in a very simple practical sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, But I you know understand. that that's unnecessary distraction. Then you start comparing, and suddenly your anxiety level goes. Somebody somebody says, "Oh, I, this is what actually happened to me," and then you say, "Oh, it did not happen to me. Maybe I'm not good at this." You start become judgmental unnecessarily on this thing. That's a this is a practical sense. No, that's so true, sir. But that is the only one percent the reason. That is that's actually not the main reason. The main reason is the you are actually taking a start starting started taking a dip into your own self. journey in the journey mhm deep journey within yourself and start observing your own self mhm so that requires a solitude mhm that requires a stillness yeah so that is the reason though you are among the world okay so though we are all among this entire universe with our close to about 8 billion people still we can see ourselves in every situation is a much powerful and profound thing so when you are silent then you then the deeper journey starts taking place and you start looking at deeply inside of yourself i think that's the main reason and yeah. uh, you know this is this is a we pass by you say it's it's, it's it's all about um, you know at the maybe at the end which i am not achieved is a self realization and what I, i don't know the definition of what self realization mm-hmm. but it's a self regulation before self realization is self yeah self-regulation. yeah the self observation so it's a, it's all and it's also before self observation is self reliance mhm so yes. you start relying on yourself not on yes. anything yes outside yes yes so all these things sir i understand that at your age doing it um is understandable or at my age doing it is understandable for 15 year old or a 20 year old as we spoke before as well for them to do this isn't it harder sir yes it's very hard for them to sit for one hour so that's why the program for them is not for one hour Oh, for them okay. it's only at ten minutes a day, because so, first and foremost, mm-hmm. you need to understand a ten-year-old. I mean, generally it's recommended from the age of ten, eight, yeah. eight is okay, or ten. Let's say ten, ten years is just recommended. Ten years, ten minutes, morning, ten minutes, evening, ten minutes, or just observing the breath can actually create a lot of results. Number one, mm-hmm. a ten-year-old is less polluted. Yes. Okay, than a forty-year-old or a fifty-year-old. Okay. Yes. We so we we, we have to clear all of our storage. They yeah. don't have to clear yeah. any storage. Yeah. So that way, it's only for ten minutes. Yeah. And uh, when by the time we come to the age of teen, age seventeen or eighteen, sixteen, uh, seventeen or something, teens, you get into thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. It's mm-hmm. basically half an hour. It's not even kind of stuff. So okay. It's actually little get increased. Now ten minutes has gone three four up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. By the time you comes to the uh, adult, it's actually two to three hours a day. Mm-hmm. and the daily practice is not the course mm-hmm. okay so it's a basically again it goes so basically because there are so much of that we need to clean up so, so the pollution need to be cleaned according to your age. yeah you can uh, the right word is definitely pollution yeah, there is a lot of pollution in us basically because we have become a lot more judgmental we have become mm. we have, uh, our perceptions are very yeah. strong on yeah. so many things yeah um, so do, we need do you, to, do you think sir the kid who started vipassana at 10 or let's take 15 sir to be an average you know not too too young let's take a 15 what would you think he would do differently to what we did before oh okay at least half a dozen i can think of okay okay Let's give first me please a three basic life first they will not react in life for anything wow first. we did so many podcasts sir at least three of uh, three main guests talked about this reaction and response so they will not react wow. because they are always the reality at the moment and they start to accepting and things like that so first benefit is that they will not react wow second whatever they elect to do in life whatever mm-hmm. they choose to do in life mm-hmm. they'll have a tremendous amount of focus Mm. their level of concentration they will not get into multitasking and things like that they their focus is going to be very very high yeah extremely high laser they'll laser focus they'll you know their laser laser focus mhm uh, so that's a second one mhm third one they become extremely friendly with others why sir basically because they started seeing everybody as themselves 
as okay. themselves yes mm. so it is i am if i need this then i need if i need a respect i need to respect others if i need to be i need friends i need to be friendly wow <laughs> yeah i so feel like answer, you know the life answers are just there the whole life yeah, answers <laughs> you don't react your focus is very intense then you become friendly all these things we are trying hard now by doing yeah, exactly. by doing the pasanas yeah basically you can say that you know the third one is friendly or you know basically your hatred towards others or hatred towards other things actually subsides a lot it doesn't go away because you really need to put a lot of effort mm-hmm. but it subsides a lot if you don't become a extremely highly concerned but you have focused definitely improves a lot okay you don't you, you react but you don't react that quickly or you not you, you, your reaction is not that intense so that's what actually so if you regularly keep on practicing from a 10 year old i have seen actually i have I, i met a lot of people now who are in the age of 26 27 mm-hmm. who have been started as a vipassana journey as a, as a kids because their parents said so then as a teenager they went to teenager course then they went to when they turned 19 20 21 they went to adult course and they are sticking mm-hmm. to this path mm-hmm. and you know believe me or not they have experimented few things here and there and quite a few they see that so this is what it is this mm-hmm. has given me immense peace this has given me immense harmony this has given mm-hmm. me a lot of happiness mm-hmm. and then i have and i there at least i met couple of people who, who are like that okay okay, okay. So i was not fortunate to get vipassana at the age of 10 yes but at least i was fortunate to get at the age of 52 yes yes the age of 6 years now from 6 yes. years of practicing so definitely i would encourage Mm-hmm. Uh, uh everybody uh, uh, to start the program as early as you can yeah uh, 10 days yeah. minimum age of 8 years is also okay okay, okay let's even say 10 years mm-hmm. uh, and we live for let's say for about 100 years so at least mm-hmm. for 90 years you can practice with us and be happy okay so basically sir from all this um what i understood is that vipassana is observing yourself deeply that's all not That's observing all it is. only or observing it's a choiceless observation i want to add one more phrase mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. as a prefix it's a choiceless observation you, okay. you you don't choose what you want to observe whatever is happening you are observing as it is yes yes okay that is the way the reaction doesn't take oh yeah that's where you are equanimity or you want to call it uh, um, you know the balance of mind no oh, this yeah. is happening let me observe mm-hmm. as it is Mm-hmm. Okay, not as they would like it to be. Okay, I met people who did vipassana, and it blew my mind because the way they speak, the maturity levels, the clarity they had on life is amazing. At at that at their age, I met someone who is in their twenties, early twenties, and I met someone who is in their early thirties. But the clarity and the confidence, sir, where do you think this this confidence coming from for those kids in early twenties? It's not a magic, uh, Patricia. It's not a magic. Basically, because you're they are so self-aware of themselves. Yeah. So when you are basically what it is all about, it's basically about just two things. You are aware of yourself. Yeah. When your awareness levels is so high, you are naturally very confident. Okay. You know what you are doing, what you are not doing. Yeah. You know what to do, what not to do. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so naturally your confidence levels are very high. Mm-hmm. You carry yourself with mm-hmm. uh, respect for yourself, so mm-hmm. as others. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a simple, um, normal thing, normal reaction yeah. which comes out of vipassana. It's simple, you say. It's simple outcome. Yeah, it's a normal reaction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> vipassana. No, it's a normal, normal, normal. I wouldn't say reaction is an outcome, basically. Because yeah. Okay, so you, I mean, you, it's like you, if you put your you hand in your fire, it burns. Do. Same yeah. thing. If you if you do it, you, you go to your backyard up. and you like you put a lemon sapling and you put a, 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 a lot of water, you know, nutrients and things like that. Mm-hmm. So an outcome is it's going to go and give you a good nice lemon. So you can make a lemonade. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do have I do have a lemon actually. <laughs> so, so you it's not going to give something different. Yes. Yes. So the same way, so when you start practicing yourself and you start becoming, you are becoming self-awareness is going to increase dramatically. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. But again, it requires a daily discipline. Yes. Yes. Discipline. Yeah. So I'm coming there, sir. So let's say you did vipassana for the ten days period. I I hope it's ten days, right? It's ten days. It is ten days program, correct? Okay, ten days program. And after coming back, you have to come into this polluted life, right? So how do you deal with this and then go back into that? of you know how 
can you actually shuffle between these two okay first and foremost the life is polluted anyway right from the day yes. to born mm-hmm. okay so let's not worry too much about the pollution yeah it's already there <laughs> it's already there the day you're born yeah the day you're born the way you treated mm-hmm. you know you started conditioning by mm-hmm. Uh, as an infant to all the way to the kind of stuff. So, let's not worry too much about evolution. Mm-hmm. So, I go to the Vipassana, then I start learning the process of observing deeply mm-hmm. and started realizing, you know, everything is impermanent and then uh, start paying attention. And also, knowing that, you know, because this observation teaches you where you know, there's a constant interaction between the mind and the body and I'm actually... reacting to all these things i should not so come back so after that come back and you have to make a decision you have to make your own adjustment to your lifestyle okay hey, is this something that i really want to do mm-hmm. if the ten days has given you some kind of any profound uh, results or some sort of a positive results then you start you have to practice two times a day once once in the morning once in the evening that is the minimum requirement you can do more than that if you want But at okay. least minimum is once in the morning and once in the evening. How long, sir? It is generally for about one hour in mm-hmm. the morning, one hour in the evening. It can go up to one hour, five minutes, one hour, five minutes because you start mm-hmm. developing. At the end of one hour, the legs five minutes. You think about you know a little bit more cleansing. So that is up to one hour, one hour. So it's about a couple of hours a day. Mm-hmm. So you still have forty-four hours. Okay. It's not even ten percent of your time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's it's a less than ten percent of your time. So if you are able to devote maybe eight nine percent of your time for the four hours, so it is actually going to give a result. But it's very hard. Mm. It's basically because it is setting that discipline. That means you have to make a lot of quite a few life lifestyle adjustments because you have a job at let's say you have to be show up the job at nine o'clock. Then you had certain things. Then you have to readjust yourself a little bit of your timetable, and say that you know. You know Your commute time is an hour. You have to leave at eight o'clock. That means in the morning you have to do that. Or even office permits you. There are some offices may give you a meditation room. Yeah, so yeah, they are encouraging these days. Yes, they are encouraging. Then that's also okay. But whatever it is, you really need to work around. Then there's an the office meetings, office work hours, so many balancing. Mm-hmm. So it's about you know daily practice. Okay. Then what actually happens every weekend? Uh, they do a one day courses. Mm. So you can participate in one day courses, which is about roughly about five and a half hours. It's not again. Uh, somebody can start at eight thirty in the morning and finish by one thirty. Some schools start at ten o'clock, and you know, depending upon the local facilities, yes, where you live, kind of stuff. Or you can do it uh, yourself, a self course. There's also material they give you to how to do your own self course. Mm-hmm. Um, generally, um, doing a self course is 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 the last option. But if you mm-hmm. are able to in a group together or Or a weekend, you can uh, go as done in the vipassana. You can gather at one of the living groups and practice for a one or two hours together. Yeah. So then it's supporting each other. So that's that's the way that so the lifestyle actually starts change, making a change basically because you start giving. See, you are giving food to your body so that your body can have an energy. Yeah. So you are giving food to your mind so that mind also becomes an energy. Yes. So that's what it's all about. So okay. then you do that. Then in in the next twelve months period, again you go for your another ten day retreat. Mm. You start repeating the courses every year. So the minimum one per year. Okay. So now I am in the six years of the Vipassana journey. So that so now actually, uh, Patricia, as I told you before, also that you know I am actually leaving for my seventh program on yes. the second of October. Yes. Yes. So this will be seven. Yes. So this so, is already sir, what what, what about uh, what I'm about to ask you now could be a little controversial, but there are people who could think in that way also. So I'm asking in their perception as well. If you think if 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 uh, one asks a question saying that if you think everything is impermanent and you start looking inside, uh, I mean, like how can you be career oriented and then you know how can you be goal oriented and stuff like that? Because if you think everything is impermanent, so wha- how would you answer that, sir? It's not controversial. I don't know why you said it's controversial. No, so, no, no, no. no. Huh? I mean, like for some people. No, no, no. Not for anybody. Not yeah. Not for some people. You know, it's there's no confusion here. Yeah. Okay. So everything is impermanent. Means, let us say, for example, you joined as a trainee. Mm-hmm. If the trainee is permanent, what mm-hmm. motivates you? Then you want from trainee to become a permanent job. 
Okay, I want it to be permanent. Example, like you put it in the kind of then permanent job, then you want to become a supervisor. Okay, then you want to become an assistant manager, then the manager, then then you direct. So every position that you are in in your journey is it permanent? Yes. If it is permanent, and you then you get stuck. Yes, this is the answer I want, sir. I, I this is the exact answer. I exactly. Want. So I tell. So then let's look at other example. Mm-hmm. Let us say, for example, your child is is your child is permanent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. See, impermanence is a reality. It yes, is a, yes. It's a truth for every single one. Yes, yes. Animate or inanimate. Yep. yep. The airplane that you fly is also impermanent. One day it has to be scrapped, and then the new aircraft has to come in. Yep, yep. Okay, like that. Every single thing, yeah, animate or inanimate, is permanent. Yeah. But it's like, at an intellectual level, it's easy for us to understand. Yes. But to see that in a, at a, at a, at a, at an experiential level. Hmm. takes a lot amount of training and effort a lot yeah yeah. yeah yeah i understand it sir i i really don't understand it from the vipassana side of it but i do understand it from the meditation side of it because i'm in touch with this side of the thing mm. the meanings are different the description is different but basically it's the same thing absolutely the basic is same. see all the same are all the people who had a wisdom whether you know whatever the century that we know they said yeah. the thing is basically yeah. know yourself yeah okay know yourself well okay mm-hmm. see i would only say that you know you know yourself is harder mm-hmm. to know anything else you just google it <laughs> yes okay. so, <laughs> that's so true sir oh my god that is so true knowing anything else is so easy but if you ask yourself do you know yourself i think that is the most hardest question anybody can answer because you don't know yourself completely exactly. it's a journey it's a continuous journey knowing yourself Let's take a let's take a, let's take a simple practical example. You're anxious. Your anxiety level is high. I mean, a lot of people are actually today suffering of the anxiety disorders. Yes. Then you suddenly start at looking deeply. Hey, why am I anxious? How this anxiety is actually happening? Exactly. What is the root cause of this? Yes. Okay. You really need a tool or a process. Yes. So we pass on a tool or a process that helps you to look your anxiety as it is. Yes. Yes. Once you start looking your anxiety as it is, yes. then actually you will overcome up your anxiety totally. I can guarantee this. Yes. Okay. There are so many things which I have overcome up my own life. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I just took anxiety as that. Okay. As one one example, which is basically one of the very big phenomena in today's world. Yeah. The fear of future. Yeah. It's not the future. It's actually the fear. About the vipassana, you said that you have mind every part of your body, right? You have every cell of your body, not every part. Every, sorry, every sorry, cell, every sorry. Subatomic cell of your body. Yeah, every cell of your body. So to feed off your every cell or to cleanse off your every cell of the body, one hour of meditation or vipassana is definitely required, sir. Isn't it so? Definitely one hour, not a day. One hour in the morning, one hour in yeah, the morning. Yeah, because you're eating lunch for half that's an hour. That's the minimum. That's the yeah. minimum. As yeah. you progress, you might devote more time, but that's up to you. Yeah. I mean, that's not unusual. But anybody yeah. who wants to become a serious vipassana meditator. Hmm. Want to see a significant results in life? I would. I wouldn't say about meditators serious or not serious. I think that is that is that is very relative. Mm-hmm. You want to see a significant results for yourself, mm-hmm. and you really need to put that effort. Is there anything else you want to add about vipassana, sir? or you would recommend? Definitely, I definitely I would like to add a couple of mm-hmm. things about mm-hmm. vipassana as well as mm-hmm. the meditation. So first mm-hmm. and foremost, meditation is a daily exercise for your mind. Mm-hmm. So that is what you need to understand. So okay. Like that, process and tools how to do that is been taught mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. now coming back to vipassana mm-hmm. see all of us want to be good do good but how what you mm. know where when all this lot of things will come into that so yeah. in that way if i really want to conclude with vipassana vipassana is all about being good and doing good when you are good and you are doing good things naturally you are happy That's naturally you are happy, naturally you are yes. joyful. Naturally, yes. there's a lot of harmony. There's yes. a lot of people. When you are doing something good, nobody is going to object to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When you are being good, nobody is going to come and feel about it. Yeah. Why are you a good person? You become a bad person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so that's what it is all about. It's a, actually a lifestyle. You yes. Pass into lifestyle. It changes your lifestyle completely. Just it it drives you to become. A good person, and all of us want that to be. 
it's not that we inherently all of us want that mm. all of us want to be good and do good i think it's just charity begins at home right so you have to start from yourself you you carve yourself and then automatically everything will be good around you is, is that absolutely the- it's a charity begins at home and also stays at home all the time because <laughs> if you are always good and you know it's a, it's a kind of stuff and it's only it, it's only you you resonate well yeah and people will start respecting you yes and you start respecting others and it's, it's actually it's, it's, it's basically yeah, and you are happy generally sir you're generally happy it doesn't matter what happens you're actually you're harmonious you are peaceful yeah. i can tell you that much i can yes. tell you from my own experience you lot of harmony lot of peace comes into place so you would recommend it for everyone absolutely thank you so much for coming on the show sir i want you to do more podcasts with us and for the viewers investments and banking finance is the big thing um so hopefully sir we will do more podcasts with no, you no something i i can definitely really talk about investment because i'm a little living example uh, yes sir we'll uh, do that definitely sir i'm actually yeah. yep i'm looking for someone sir we'll definitely schedule again and we'll do on investments no problem thank you thank so you. much sir namaste sir thank you so much okay.